Hi and hello all. Let us have a look at the synthesis of papaverin. So the molecular structure is like this. And the molecular formula is C20H21NO4. Molecular weight is 339. It is an opium alkaloid. It is antispasmodic drug. It is a drug for erectile dysfunction. The first synthesis is reported by Pictet and Gams. And there are a number of modifications made on this, uh, improvements made on this uh, synthesis. One important aspect of this synthesis is the cyclization using bischler napier alsky reaction. So let us look at the retrosynthesis of papaverin. The retrosynthesis means breaking bonds theoretically and logically to find out the simple starting material, possibly a simple starting material for the synthesis of the target molecule. So let us do the retrosynthesis of this papaverin. So this is the retrosynthetic arrow. Now, as I already know the synthesis, I can, you know, this retrosynthesis is uh, pretty much easier for me. I mean, it's actually the dihydro version of papaverin from which we will uh, go to papaverin. Now, this means this molecule, the papaverin can be ma made from this particular molecule. This is the dihydro papaverin. Now, how will you make this molecule? Let me copy this down and break bonds in that structure. Now, the question is, how will you make this molecule? This molecule can be made from, you know, uh, something like that. So, this is actually what we are going for, the bischler napier alsky reaction. You already know this has to be a ketone here, or amide here, sorry. I, it, it has to be an amide. And so, from this amide, we can make uh, this dihydro papaverin. How, uh, how will you make this particular molecule? We can break uh, this particular bond. Let's break here. So this molecule can be made from these two. So we let let me let us make it a bit more logical. This is an amine, obviously, and this is better to be. Uh, it's better to be uh, acid chloride. So from this acid chloride and this amine, we can make this particular molecule this amide and how will you make this uh, uh, this amine and this acid chloride actually both these can be made from the corresponding nitrile compound so on reduction this will give the uh, this will give you the amine and on uh, hydrolysis this will give you the acid which can be converted easily into acid chloride so both these molecules so both these molecules can be made from the same starting material that is it can be made from corresponding chloride. So a nucleophilic reaction of the corresponding chloride. Then let's break bond here. Now this will be the cyanide and or KCN or sodium cyanide we can use. And this has to be the uh, you know chloride something. This one can be made from veritrol. Bone breaking is here. And bone breaking happens here. Okay. So we looked at the retrosynthesis of papaverin to have an idea about the real synthesis of this molecule. So now let us look at the synthesis of papaverin. So it starts from veritrol. It's reacting with formaldehyde and HCl. You will get veritrol chloride. So actually we will take veritrol, formalin and bubble HCl through it. We will get veritrol chloride. Let's have a look at the mechanism of the reaction. So our starting material is veritrol. And uh, in presence of HCl, this aldehyde, formaldehyde will get protonated. So let's show that. So this is the, it will have a positive charge. So this positive charge on oxygen makes this carbon, this carbonyl carbon even more susceptible to attack. So electrophilic aromatic substitution will happen. So that will be the next step. So this pi bond breaks and it forms a new bond with the carbon carbon atom while the old bond breaks. So let's hope, copy the whole thing and uh, try to make sense of the curved arrows. So this means one of this, this curved arrow means this pi bond is breaking and a new bond is forming between this carbon carbon and this carbon. And now this bond is breaking. 
so that's what you what is meant by this curved arrow so let's show that that bone broke and there is no longer a positive charge on oxygen because oxygen got one extra electron now what about the charge on this carbon actually this carbon lost a one of its electrons so it will have a positive charge right in this pi bond there are two electrons and one electron belong to this carbon the other electron belong to this carbon now both electron is now in this bond so that means this il this carbon this particular carbon go lost one of its electrons so it will have a formal positive charge now actually rearomatization will happen so let us draw the hydrogens here hydrogen here actually there is a hydrogen uh, earlier itself uh, just now we are drawing it that's all the, the two electrons in this particular carbon hydrogen bond will change its position so that they will be they will no longer be present in between hydrogen and this carbon they will be in between this carbon and this carbon so maximum probability of finding these electrons will be in between these two nuclei so that means this bond is breaking and h plus is leaving so let us show that what we have is a corresponding alcohol still there is hcl in the reaction mixture so there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen So what does that mean? Let's so let's make the bonds here. This arrow, this curved arrow means there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and hydrogen. That means hydrogen lost, I mean oxygen lost one of its electron. So there will be a positive charge on oxygen. And this hydrogen uh, gained one electron. So there will be no positive charge on this hydrogen. So let me transport this positive charge here. So now oxygen is having a positive charge while well, it can leave us water so this could be an sn2 mechanism or sn1 mechanism uh, more likely it will go as an sn1 mechanism so let us show in that way we will show an sn1 mechanism for this chlorination so this bond breaks that means it will leave us water and this there will be a positive charge here so let us show that This means this bond is breaking and uh, this is leaving us water. A negative charge species is uh, chloride ion in the reaction mixture. What happens is the negative charge species attack this carbocation. Mason one way. It's going to be a chlorine bond here. And uh, There will be no longer a positive charge on this carbon. So I showed an SN1 mechanism for this chlorination. This could very well be SN2, but I think it's more likely to be SN1 as it's an activated, you know, a benzene ring. It's in a, you know, benzylic position. So it's more likely to go through an SN1 mechanism. Thus, we saw the mechanism for the formation of this veretrol chloride so from veretrol. Now, an SN2 reaction of uh, nucleophile Cl- minus on this carbon will lead to a, a homoveretrol nitrile combo. Cl- minus leaves and uh, is a, it is replaced by nitrile group or cyanide group. This can undergo reduction to form the corresponding amine and it can undergo hydrolysis to form the corresponding acid. So let us see the reduction first. So in presence of uh, Rane nickel, it is hydrogenated and uh, C triple bond N will become this amine. So this is homo amine. Now let us see the hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, acid hydrolysis can be done on cyanide group compound. Generally it will hydrolyze into a carboxylic acid. So mechanism is a nice mechanism but pretty long. So I won't go through that. Now this can be made into an acid chloride using thionyl chloride thionyl chloride uh, converts acid to corresponding acid chloride okay now we can combine this acid chloride and this particular amine homoveritrol amine this amine reacts with acid chloride 
uh, to form corresponding amide. So we can show the mechanism here. This means the nitrogen is making a new bond with this carbonyl compound and this Cl minus leaves. And uh, uh, Cl minus leaves also the plus charge, there will be a plus charge on nitrogen and H plus will leave from nitrogen. So, so this is the amide we get. This on bischler napieralski reaction. So that's our key reaction. The cyclization happens. The bischler napieralski reagent is phosphoryl chloride, POCl3. Okay. So what happens here? A new bond is forming here. This oxygen is completely removed. So uh, you, we can have a look at this mechanism. Uh, I just redrew it. The mechanism basically says that this lone pair is coming here, making a new bond here, and all bond breaks. That let's show that too. All bond breaks, and this lone pair attacks this phosphorus, and Cl minus leaves. I have shown this as O minus is forming, and then it's coming back, and Cl minus leaves. Anyway, a new bond is forming here. Uh, a new bond is forming here, and Cl minus breaks apart. Now, all in all, a Cl minus here and H plus from nitrogen will leave. So basically, minus HCl, oxygen phosphorus bond is pretty strong and phosphorus can be called as an oxophile. So in next step, this bond can break, oxygen carbon bond can break, facilitated by this lone pair, which is will make a new bond here, which basically leads to the removal of this whole thing. So then uh, means this oxygen is gone, this bond is no longer there. A new bond is forming here. This because of this lone pair, a new bond is forming here. So that's a triple bond. Now this nitrogen pulls this electron towards it more effectively. Electrophilic aromatic substitution can happen. A new bond is forming between this particular carbon and this carbon, and this uh, old bond will break. Both electron will go to nitrogen, and uh, nitrogen will uh, no longer have the negative uh, positive charge on it. So let us draw, draw that. This, this means there is going to be a new bond between this carbon and this particular carbon. Actually, this oxygen will also help in this reaction. Actually, activated, uh, see, this active this active aromatic ring undergoes this type of uh, bischler napieralski reaction. So uh, this OME helps. So this is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and uh, this carbon and uh, there is going to be a new bond and there will be a new bond between this carbon and this uh, carbon. Okay, let us show those arrows. So uh, those bonds. So there is going to be a new bond here. That means this old bond is breaking and that will be here. That's what the curved arrow shows. Let's remove the curved arrow now. Once it's here, this bond, I mean, as soon as, I mean, when this bond is breaking here, and uh, what does that mean? That means this curved arrow means this there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this carbon. And uh, I mean this carbon between this carbon and this carbon. And uh, this means uh, an old bond is breaking and there is no charge on this nitrogen now. So we have a structure like this actually. This is a six membered ring. Let us make it you know look a bit more beautiful. Now there is a positive charge on this oxygen. Right, because oxygen lost one of its electron. Now re-aromatization can happen. So there is a hydrogen here. We didn't write it. Just uh, removing that H plus will ensure the re-aromatization. Okay. So this will lead to this dihydropapaverin. Now this dehydrogenation. One hydrogen from here. One hydrogen from here. So H two is eliminating to form a new bond here, which will be papaverin. Hydropapaverin on dehydrogenation, we can use palladium and uh, uh, this will lead to minus H2, that is hydrogen is eliminated. So what we will get is uh, papaverin. So let us have a look at the whole picture once again. So veratrol on uh, reaction with uh, formaldehyde and HCl will give you veratrol chloride, which on reaction with the cyanide will give you corresponding cyanide compound.
This cyanide compound on reduction will give you homoveritriol amine. Another reaction on this uh, cyanide, that is the hydrolysis of this compound or the nitrile group will give you carboxylic acid, which on reaction with the thionyl chloride will give you acid chloride. So this acid chloride and this amine can combine to form an amide. So they will combine and a HCl molecule will leave and you will get an, a, a corresponding amide. This one, bischler napieralski reaction with this uh, phosphoryl chloride, you will get dihydropapaverin, which on dehydrogenation using palladium, you will get papaverin. So that's the synthesis of uh, papaverin. Hope you understood the synthesis and some mechanism involved in this. Thank you.